world by revealing to us the power of God. We have considered our discipleship in topics from what to do if and when we fall, to listening for God to pull us from our country and step out in faith. We have considered the responses of those living in the days with Jesus and know that we too are called to respond to God's grace. Donna spoke of God's gift of water and Anne directed us to use our spiritual eyes to see, not remain blind. Last week, we considered the dry bones of Ezekiel and the ability for us to be filled with the breath of God, to stand strong in the strength of Jesus, remembering his sacrifice and his resurrection. Today, on this Palm Sunday, we come in joyful anticipation as post-resurrection people who have the freedom to bask in the joy of our salvation and live in the awe of grace. We can be joyful as we wave our palm branches and shout, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Those present that day shouted, Hosanna, which means save us. Asking to be free from the oppression of the Roman government. They did not know what was ahead for Jesus, who on this day they celebrated with as their long awaited Messiah. We know their shouts would change from Hosanna to crucify. Together we sang, This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This comes from Psalm 118, 24, which we read together. It declares for us that God makes each day for us to live and to love. Even when we have a bad day, we know that even through our tears, we can say, This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. And be glad. We stand in awe of God's grace and have been given the gift of each new day to enjoy. In our faith, it is an opportunity to witness and to share. In our work life, it's an opportunity to show that we can work in honesty and with integrity. And in our home life, it is a time to love and, and embrace each other fully being present with one another to enjoy the day and make good choices. Remember as a child when you asked your parents to do something with a group of friends that they didn't want you to do? If you were like me, I pleaded, you might have, but mom or dad, everyone else is doing it. For me, the typical response was, well, if everyone else jumped off of a bridge, we could do that too. Right? Now, I don't know about you, but my friends never asked me to jump off of a bridge, nor did I completely understand that reply. But as an adult, I understand this was to show me that what I was asking to do might not be safe. Did I get it? Did you? No. Too often, everyone else is doing it, which is a mob mentality, results in a lack of good judgment and can spur on our worst decision making. Mob mentality is not usually safe or filled with level thoughts or truthfulness. Going along with the crowd is dangerous and we see its effect during Holy Week. In hate and rejection, the mob is used against Jesus to intensify the shouts of crucify. Even Jesus' mood did not seem victorious on this day. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 19, we read how Jesus wept over the city of Jerusalem as he approached it, knowing later it would be destroyed. He knew he was presenting himself as a king, but not the kind of king the people wanted. He was not a king yielding political power, but God's power in humility, sacrifice, and love. 
Jesus rode in on a donkey, not a stallion. Fulfilling the prediction made about him by the prophet Isaiah. Also in Isaiah chapter 52, we read these words. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the world. Today it could be argued that Palm Sunday is the day that is the most, well, the most human. On this day, we celebrate the royal triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem with pomp and circumstance. Surrounded by his disciples and recipients of his miracles, there is excitement and but by the next day, the mood will change and his passion will begin. This day, the joys and sorrows of humanity are held in tension amidst confusion that reveals our humanness and our need for a savior. We move from today to the next high holy day of Monday Thursday, where Jesus shares one final meal with his disciples trying to teach them and teach us by example through word and deed what it means to follow him and be his disciple. While they bicker about who is the greatest, Jesus bends down and washes their feet, telling them to serve the way he serves. Good Friday is the day where sin is exposed in all of its ugliness, but it's also the day that we witness the surrendering of God's Son, Jesus, in love, revealing the awe of grace through Jesus' sacrifice and the forgiveness of our sins. Then comes Sunday, Easter resurrection, full of the joy of the season. And we're free to receive it, to believe it, and to live into the gift of grace that it is. But do we sell ourselves short if we do not participate by remembering the events that made the joyous celebration of Easter possible? We cannot truly experience the depth of the joy of resurrection without our repentance and humbling of ourselves as we consider the death of Jesus and the cost Jesus endured to offer us this joyful salvation. If today was only a Palm Sunday parade with no other implications, then we would step back and let the parade pass us by without a second thought. But we can't, because we can't put aside what we already know will follow. We can't deny that this wonderful, joy-filled day will not last, but turn to sorrow and pain and the death of Jesus as he is rejected by us. There needs to be an understanding of what this declaration of Hosanna will cost the one that we know and love, the one we worship and call Savior and friend. It is not unusual for us to experience joy and sorrow together. After all, that is the friction that we experience in everyday life. We live in the presence of holiness and sinfulness. We feel the tension between good and evil. We experience love and then witness hate among us. Living post-crucifixion, however, we have an advocate in Jesus who saves us and remains with us, calling us forth to love by living in holiness, mercy, and grace. Palm Sunday tells the truth yeah. about us as clearly as it tells the truth about Jesus. And yet, still today, we are asked to decide what our response will be. Will we wave palm branches oblivious to the suffering that follows? Or will we be faithful and walk the path to the cross with Jesus? Will we desire to 
to stay with Jesus or when life gets hard, and we flee and turn away and run as the disciples did, giving in to fear. To declare that we are free of those choices is to be short-sighted of our choice for salvation and our day-to-day -day living in faith. Besides that, we miss the point of being reminded of the Palm Sunday event. The question is, will we stand in awe of grace? Are we forgiven by Jesus' grace and welcome to eternal life? Or have we instead repeatedly rejected him and his gift of love and grace? Because of Jesus, we can stand in awe of grace. We can stand boldly, holding our palm branches in grateful thanks and praise for our salvation. We like to think we would have followed Jesus through that week of suffering, but acknowledge we might have fled in fear as well. The question is not, why didn't they get it? The question is, do we get it? They shouted Hosanna, that implies that they got it, since Hosanna translates, save us. But Matthew makes sure to point out to us in verse 10 that the city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? Boy, that sure does match us in humanity, doesn't it? It makes me wonder how many joined that parade without even knowing who Jesus was. The crowd was large, and it was made up of both Jesus' followers and city dwellers who were there for Passover, some who did not know Jesus at all. They might turn to one another and ask, who is this again? And maybe the response would be a shrug. Or maybe it would be, that's Jesus, the guy from Galilee. Oh, right, they would say, pretending to know who Jesus of Galilee was. We've journeyed another year together and have come around to the Palm Sunday Parade again. The odd little celebration marked by waving palms and throwing coats on the ground, all in the midst of shouting, lots of shouting. Would we drop our coats and pave the way for Jesus? So many questions come to mind as we read the story. Did those who were seeing Jesus for the first time learn of him and learn of his teachings? Did they return home only to wonder, <coughs> who was that? Were these strangers that knew nothing of his life and his teachings the ones who made up the mob, yelling crucify him? What do we need to think about today? I suggest to you that as you look upon the brown palm branch that you hold, you consider the significance of that branch because with it comes a choice. What words will we choose to shout? Will it be Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord? Or along with the, with the mob, will we shout crucify him? Will we pick up that branch and walk with Jesus declaring, Lord, save us, Save us so that we might stand in awe of grace. I pray that we will. How much more human can we be? This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. But that day was also the day that the Lord had made. Think about that. On that Palm Sunday day, humanity is seen at both its best and that its worst follows. We remember the event, hold our palm branches, and make our choice. Will we choose his salvation? Will we daily choose to follow Jesus in faith? Let us not be afraid to follow Jesus to his cross, for we will be saved from the consequences of our own sin and death. Let us in confidence and joy Stand in awe of grace. Thanks be to God. Amen.